So to get a little preface for this, um, first of all, super small channel that I, I don't know what came out from recommended, but hey, video concept like seems cool. I'm sure there's probably no other is on the same topic. Bit of a background. I am a bit of a recovering Dota 2 addict. Um, still think the game's great. Still think it's phenomenal. I've actually, while we're discussing this, do I have Steam open? I do. Um, we have. 2,578 hours, and this is our second, or well, this is kind of our main, but we had another account we played for about a year, year and a half straight on, um, during some of our worst Dota 2 phases when we didn't really have a real job or real adult work, um, because the girlfriend was also on Steam. We could play it and spend every waking minute with her, and instead we're at friends playing games, which is clearly a very fucking healthy relationship, as you can tell. But I was young, I was dumb, and like, sex is nice. So, that's the background, but now we're going to basically jump into this. In 2021, the prize pool for Dota 2 is going to go away. Reached $40 million, the highest amount in. I'm just saying, first of all, judging by this accent, sounds, I want to say, South African, could be completely wrong. Um, that's a fucking lot of money. Like, total price, I can know it's total price, but first place is still 18. Like, 18 million for first place. Showing up, you still got 100k. I'm guessing showing up was 18 players. I actually have no idea how many teams made it there. Which, I'm not saying is easy. It's still very difficult to make even 18 players, but you still got 100k. That's still a shitload of money in the real, like for almost anyone, especially I'm sure, assuming a lot of gamers. In esports history, that beat the record of thirty-four million dollars the year before it, and twenty-five million dollars the year before that. The oh, fuck. Like twenty eighteen, that is a shit. That is like a shitload of money. I'm sure, especially given inflation. Oh fuck! And at the time for any esports, that's insane. The next most valuable event in esports was the Fortnite World Cup in 2019, with a prize pool of only 15.2 million dollars. Yeah, fucking joke of a game. Can't even make 20 million dollars. But this year, Dota's prize pool for the international only sits at 2.2 million dollars. Sorry, that's literally a tenth. That's, no, that's less than a tenth. A fucking fifth. I was working on 20 million. I was 40 million. Fuck. In this video, we're going to talk about how. Like, that's not even. Like, that's not even worth it anymore. Yeah, it's still a shit out of money. But I mean, like, in retrospect, the fucking difference. How the international became the most valuable prize in esports, and how it has dropped off so heavily in the last two years. This is your esports update. In 2013, Valve, the company that developed Dota 2... Yeah, I'm also just trying to think now, how the fuck did it get that bad? Then again, we aren't currently playing the game and haven't bought a fucking battle pass, which contributed to... Also, I don't... Okay, well, how did it get so hard? So I'm assuming you will explain how the fucking battle pass system works, which we haven't bought in y literal years. But anyway, yes. As well as Counter-Strike and Steam decided to change the course of esports history by introducing a crowd or compendium into the international or compendium not battle pass but they same concept different name called the compendium an in-game esports companion that allowed those that purchased it to engage with the tournament in various ways like predicting match results and supporting your favorite team the concept was simple you pay ten dollars for the base compendium and 25 percent of all the money spent on the compendium gets contributed into the final i don't know if he goes into a lot of this on top of the initial 1.6 million dollars that valve put in this was a huge success for the community as year over year the price so okay he didn't really go into it but the early compendiums were fucking cool and i know they just the last comp look i haven't probably bought a compendium in two years but it's basically a battle pass system. You buy the compendium, you level up, you get fucking cosmetics and cool shit. But the added on extra systems that they added to it was really, I think, cool and well designed. Like, um, and I think one of the more recent ones, I could be wrong, and I'm sure someone in chat or in comments will correct me. Um, you had like Hero Chase, which was like, imagine a massive map, and you have to get from one corner of the map basically to the other corner of the map. And there's a whole bunch of challenges along the way that basically gives you a little node and from that node you can go to another node another node kind of 
actually can I zero chase map loader campaign um no it cannot then I definitely have the wrong name for what it was called. Why can it not? Fuck, man. Okay, apparently I can't think of the right name for this, so well done me. But anyway, what I was trying to say is it had basically it was a whole map and was interconnected through little dots and you would go from one dot to one dot um, fucking okay, this is fucking, I don't know why we so zoomed out, but hey so basically I don't want a brush, I want to give me a fucking, ooh, calligraphy brush yes, there we go okay, so basically you would start off here And that we were starting point, and then here at the other end, this is fucking horrendous. Would be a little crystal, and if you got to that crystal, you would unlock the arcana. But now, what would happen was, give me a fucking pen. You had a whole bunch of little nodes along the way. This looks atrocious and pixelated as shit. We're just gonna do it like that, and like that, and then like that, and then like that, and then like that. Okay, cool. Whatever the fuck. And basically, these were all had paths across them. Basically, you would go to this one, you would beat it, and then it would unlock a path to either go there or go there. And then when you would beat that one, it would have another path, basically, for you to be able to go there or there. And eventually progressing all the fucking way to the end here. And that's how you would get that, like, item or that cosmetic. And basically, it was really cool. So this would be, like, all these would be like little mini challenges. Um, when is the definitely I don't want to fucking save that atrocious mess. Like win a certain amount of games or use a certain hero or use like use certain heroes from a pool or um shit like that. Which was really cool. It was fun, it was a way that made you play, a way that made the game more interesting and like forced you to also try different things, which can be kind of monotonous with MOBAs where you get into that fucking setting of I play my three heroes, and that is all I play. So it became, it was cool concepts, very well done, very different battle pass to what we used to have just, hey, there's these three little challenges, fucking kill this many people, um, and then you get points and you progress your battle pass faster. It was a cool concept, it was fun, I think it was actually, look, I don't know if Valve was the first one to that, it was the first battle pass of that nature I interacted with, which I thought was really cool and really fun. So in all fairness to them, I think the innovation around the battle pass was really cool, um, but yeah. I suppose we'll go. 2.8 million dollars in 2013, 10 million dollars in 2014, 18 million dollars in 2015. Valve started releasing more big money here, boys. Content and events that were tied into the compendium. Which so you got like this is all shit you could get. So you got like different curses, which is kind of stupid. Your all star vote for like they would have an all star game, and then you could pick if you got to that much, you could pick the players who play in it. You got immortal treasures, arcanas, you could pick the next arcana, which so arcana is basically the rarest item in Dota. You'll be able to like. Each weekly pick would have two heroes, and you'd pick one or the other. And then from picking one or the other, that one would go through, and kind of like head-to-head -head knockout system. And ever one at the end of the day would get the next... Okay, now. ...into the battle pass. A term that gamers are all too familiar with in 2024, but in 2016, this was a huge change. The community was seeing a huge up... I was really well done and fed it to them. ...an exclusive content that was only available for a limited time in the year, and didn't want to miss out and the result was a skyrocketing of money spent in game and subsequently a rise in the prize pool in 2021 the ti prize pool reached just over 40 million dollars that's fucking insane because that means if they only put in 1.6 so we're just going to make numbers round here roughly i mean this was 40 million and fucking some change um i think when you get that big the rest fucking after the 40 doesn't really matter um you're talking about like what's that 38 million dollars contributed by the community and only two dollars fifty went through a 
each battle pass. Yes, you could also pay to level up your battle pass, and then that would help. If you pay to level up your battle pass potion, that also still went back into uh, the prize pool. But I mean, that's still an apocalyptic amount of fucking... That's not what I meant to do. That's what I wanted. So if you're talking, what was that? What did we say? 38 million. Uh, divided by 2.5. That's still 15 million compendiums. Or, not an, I know not necessarily any compendiums, because you could also buy them at a higher level, and then a large contribution went through, and you could pay to them up. But you're still talking at least by like 10 million compendiums. Which is fucking insane, or at least for a game. The price pool would never be this high again. So, what happened? Drugs and strippers and cocaine. Even though the battle pass was clearly a profitable strategy for Valve, seeing as only 25% of his battle pass purchases go to the prize pool, they're making about $120 million from that. Valve was unhappy with the amount of resources invested into creating large amounts of content that not every player is going to be able to experience. Seeing this, they took a big step. In 2023, Valve announced that there would be no more Battle Pass for the Internationals. Okay, that's just fucking horseshit. That's stupid. That's actually the dumbest thing I've ever heard of. Also, can we point out that the prize pool went up to 16 million, oh, 40 million, which means Valve made the larger chunk of that. I'm just pointing that out. I think he did actually touch on that. But I mean, we just saw, fuck, did I exit the calculator? It was what, 15 million battle passes, I think we saw? Let's say it's only 10 million times 7.5. 70, oh, I suppose he did touch on that. I think it was 150 million he spoke about. That's insane money. I mean, that's, I think, more than most games make. Instead, they would be reintroducing the compendium that acted more as the original esports companion that let you engage with the tournament while earning some in-game rewards along the way. This decision tanked the price. Nah, that's fucking cop out. That's such a cop out. Why would you, like, I get it was cool and stuff, but surely then you can innovate in other ways. Going, like, almost backwards is just fucking boring. Prize pool, only raising an extra $1.7 million, leading to the lowest TI prize pool since 2014. Even though they knew that... that literally 10 years behind, like, previously, that's fucking insane. ...that it would make them less money. Valve reassured the community that their focus would shift to creating year-round content that all players could enjoy throughout the whole year instead of dedicating it all to the exclusive paid-for battle pass. Valve was also quick to remind the community that it is still dedicated to making the International the greatest event in esports each year, but will focus more on but the has no money. and not on the battle pass. Well, of course the community fucking hated Valve's that. strategy has left the community in two camps. Esports professionals have spoken about this change optimistically and point out that this could be a refreshing change. I didn't... A little... Allowing Valve to make the I don't see if he reads them. The larger player base. And considering that Dota 2's play he does not read them. Um, a new era for Dota. Less about the price pool and more. No more. TR Battle Pass changes all around. Cosmetics never made me purchase the Battle Pass. I am a minority. You are the fucking one person, homie. Cool shit sells stuff. I don't really care about who won in the... At some point, I stopped following professional Dota. Didn't give a fuck, but I wanted to look dope in game. I cared about the skins. I cared about all of that. I cared about the stupid petty challenges that made the game more fun. Um, but I know I'm in a minority, hoping for a positive overhaul in the competitive scenes to keep interest growing. Okay, the, I'll get back to my point. Like, like I said, I stopped watching professional Dota. Yes, I did at some points. A lot of times I still bought the Battle Pass and didn't do that because I wanted to play the challenges, I wanted to do the mini games. I was like, contributing to something I was had no fucking enjoyment or entertainment in. Like, I feel like a lot of us play games for fun because we enjoy games. Don't get me wrong, at some point you can get very much into them, you can take them almost at a, you know, very competitive high-end level. But to get into the professional scene as a viewer, follower, and a watcher, 
takes a, such a small portion of the community. And I think that's for anything, for any sport, not just fucking esports. But even if you look at like shit like soccer, rugby, fucking cricket, football, whatever you want to do, whatever you want to look at. Oh, yeah, dope. Let's watch one or two games. Cool, fun. Haha. <laughs> you know, no one actually religiously follows it and supports those teams. The people that do that is a much smaller part of the population than the people that would, hey, I'm going to go out to the friends and fucking kick a ball around in the backyard or, you know, have a little bit of fun. That's not always part of the community. Those aren't always people that are that vested in the professional setup or the professional interest of the game. Oh, fuck, my camera froze. Sorry, chat. Um, it's not all what, like, what it's all about, and I feel like that's just so much more than we tend to look at about stuff. Like... It created an interest in people wanting to watch or invest in a battle pass which improved the competitive scene for those that would enjoy the competitive scene and enjoyed the competitive scene by taking people that were non-competitive followers, non-TR followers, non-TR watchers, and getting them to buy the battle pass because it's fun and because they wanted to get the cool cosmetics, they wanted to play the cool money games, they wanted to be part of that community without having to invest or wanting to be invested or caring about the actual professional scene and in doing so, I got my cool cosmetics. The professional scene got $2.50. The prize pool went up. The spectacle went up. The people investing themselves in the game went up. I'm pretty sure the production value and all the stuff they could do just was better because they had a bigger budget. Because if you're making $120 million to fund the international versus fucking, we said, what's roughly a fifth? So what's that? Uh, like $20 million, $25 million? That's not at all how maths works, but we're going with it. It should be actually like probably around 40 or whatever, but it just devalues the professional scene by taking all the cosmetics and bullshit out of it that would have invested players that were non-competitive watchers. Um, okay, what's the second one? Love this blog post, so let's see what they, what they do. I love TR and the battle pass for what it, sim for what it symbolized. A celebration of Dota, competition and, way, and a way for everyone to be part of the largest prize pool in gaming history. Over the years, I've mentioned my complaints with the Battle Pass, but respect to the business model and re revenue generated. To me, however, the Battle Pass felt like work to maximize its value per dollar spent, and I personally felt it shadowed the international by lasting longer than the largest events in Dota history. How much commitment and resource it took from the Dota team and how much focus it drew from the community, but both before. Dragon after its event. On top of that, it always it was always controversial with the community, even though in the end most were satisfied, or at least to buy next year's. I'm really excited to see how they change things up. The battle pass was revolution revolutionary when we first came out. The new frontier patch updates was also revolutionary for Dota 2. I'm not out of my mind that they're going to do something great here, but will it make casuals and normies? want to buy the battle pass and by extension of just buying it for the shit you get like the cosmetics you improve the professional scene you just increase the funding for it okay allowing valve to make the game better and attract a larger player base and considering that dota 2's player base has been somewhat stagnant since 2015 a change in strategy is a necessity. I would assume it's actually decreasing, but that could just be my view. Have spoken more skeptically about the change, saying that without the thrill of a huge prize pool, TI seems to matter less. Which also don't agree with, which I also don't disagree with that. I mean, in fairness, if you told someone you've got, if you win, you could win $10 million, or if you win, you could win $1 million, it makes the stake seem less. Yes, a $1 million is still a fucking shitload of money. But comparatively, it does drop the stakes. It does make it seem less. It does make it seem smaller and more insignificant, even though it's still apocalyptic amounts of money. Um, Valve started... Um, Valve started... I'm, improved, I'm assuming started to improve Dota to attract new players to the game. 
But in the same time, biggest motivation for new players was a big prize pool at TR. I think three to five mil in best case scenario, not enough. And I hope someone, something will change next year or even this year. Or plan is rider equal new TI. I'm not sure what that rider equals new TI. It's also obviously someone who's not a native English speaker. So fucking well done to them because that's actually pretty cognizant, well thought out tweet for someone whose English isn't their first language. Um, and I fucking couldn't do that in any other language. And I think he does have a point. As well, like I was saying, obviously the stakes are but if you hear, oh, fucking, you can win $10 million by coming first in international, like, oh, what? This, this game has so much money behind it, it must be so good, I'm going to download it and try it out. Like, that is a solidly logical thought process. Well, this is a disappointing compendium. Was quite excited for the compendium to come back, it's been quite some time. Yeah, I think I've spoke about that already. Mixed feelings on this blog post. Well, I think having content for Dota throughout the year, not just crammed its battle pass, is obviously a good thing. But I've no idea how they plan on raising any substantial money for TR prize pools. There's no skins and only a, and only a month before TR. Again, basically what I said. You know what? Run it for longer. Get people involved. Give them a bunch of shit. Make them want to be part of the game. Make them want to play the game. Make the fucking people out here like me that just want fucking cool skins but want to buy the battle pass. We want to get a full value out of the battle pass by buying it. And even for people that are invested in professional Dota, yes, a lot of them may be able to justify spending the extra $10 to support the TI. But a lot of them made that purchase was so much easier and the $10 was so much easier to spend. And part was because you got to support TR, which you cared about professional Dota, and you got cool shit. Cool shit sold the compendium. Made it easy to buy. It made it much easier to part with your money because I get cool shit and I can support those tournaments and I get to watch the games. Like, it made a lot of sense. Or that a huge prize pool was what was putting Dota on the map in the first place. I do also so agree with that. It's hard to argue against, as even at its height in 20... Is it on HD or does it just look like shit? Are we on fucking enhanced bitrate even? Okay. 2021, the international was not even in the top 10 most viewed esports tournament. What's first? League, Free Fire, World Series, Singapore. Okay, that's an online game. League of Legends, Mobile Legends, Mobile Legends, League of Legends, Le League, League, League. PUBG Mobile. Mobile Legends. Who the fuck is watching all these Mobile Legends and Free Fire mobile games? CS Dota 2. Being I mean, by League of Legends and PUBG Mobile. Oof. Fast forward to League literally fucking destroyed it in viewership. Again, with a prize pool of $2.2 million as of recording. I have no doubt in my mind that TI 2024 is going to be a memorable event. Literally Last attempt. No, it's a first. Fucking insignificant. That the lower prize pool takes away some of the event's allure. But doesn't it also, like, apart from just the allure of the event and the attraction, in terms of the quality of players, doesn't it also decrease that? Because, obviously, yes... There's consistent tournaments. I know they've changed the tournament structure. There's consistent larger tournaments throughout the year. And there's sponsors and blah, blah, blah. And that's how you make a lot of your money. I understand that. Um, especially a lot of the esports organizations are going into content creation using your esports players to generate content and use that as a second revenue stream. All makes sense. All cool. Um, all agree with. But when it comes down to tournaments, yes, it's only once a year. But if you know you're one of the teams that are extremely likely just to qualify, 100k is probably more than you win. 100k for showing up and coming last or just managing to qualify. It's probably more than you made from a lot of other tournaments' first prizes that weren't maybe the other majors, the majors um, in the Dota series. So, like, just in terms of that amount of funding that you got from TI as a cash injection to the business, surely it also improved the quality of, like, the teams in like in and of themselves just by that pure justification of that monetary injection now if you're looking at you know showing up and you're getting 20k it's a very different value and it shouldn't be 20k in theory if it's gone down to like five percent of its previous value you're looking at what fucking 5k as someone who has personally played way too much dota over the years and a certain my kind of guy and fuck me homie that is impressive too much money on a game that is free to play I'm don't worry me too re-rolling for fucking 
The first crystal made in Arcana and spending all my money on that, but hey, here we go. I really do miss the excitement of the battle pass and the incentive it gave to be involved in the international. But at the same time, I've really enjoyed the new Crownfall content, the redesigned facet system, and more frequent updates. It really does feel like Valve is trying to make the game more dynamic and refreshing, offering more great- I've no idea what the fuck this even is. Pay for a little bit of extra loot. So what's your opinion? Comment below with how you feel about the new compendium or Dota as a whole. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, and keep an eye out on the channel for upcoming recaps of the international in the future. That was actually a really cool video. Um, what's this, homie? Baddington Bear with 700 subs. Fucking, that was... I think it was actually really well done. That was a cool video. Um, I'll link the video down in the description below, like always, and I'm going to pop it in chat as well for you guys in chat. But I think, yeah, I think... As a person that I am not currently playing Dota, but still wanted to massively succeed... I do think a big draw would have been having the Battle Pass compendium back in. It probably would have been one of the reasons I got back into the game and grinded out a couple of weekends of Dota 2 so that I could get cool shit. I still like cool shit. Cool shit still makes people pay. If you include more people by just adding in cool shit, cool content, and don't get me wrong, yes, they've tried with a lot of other specialty game modes, that, that Crownfall thing you showed, Everything like that shows that they're trying to invest a lot more time and effort into Dota. But if you put it around TI and you combine the two into it, so like you did that crown for as part of the companion package, blah, blah, blah. Even if it was a part of the companion package, you got maybe um, extra cosmetics for it or like some shortcuts or some stupid bullshit. Um, still think it would have been really cool, really fun. And it increases the prize pool. The prize pool increases. The spectacle of the sports increases. People are drawn into the game. People are drawn back into the game because you can get the battle pass, you can get cool shit against people that quit like me or more likely to join back in, maybe re-fall in love with it, start playing it again very regularly again. Um, bring in the new players, yeah, oh fucking $10 million for first place and $40 million total prize pool. It brings in new people, it helps grow the game, it helps make the game more relevant again. And I don't know, I think Valve fucked up. I also think people are really like, oh, they're, they're making a spectacle of the battle pass and it's not, you know... It's not putting TI on a pedestal because it's about TI and people care more about the skins. Like, homie, the reason TI happens and can get funded and have just better everything is because of those stupid skins and makes people that aren't part of the game buy or aren't interested in the professional scene buy them and help fund the professional scene. The more funding there is for the professional scene, it just leads to better games, better content, better production value, which is a massive thing in um, modern esports is the production value. If the production value is insane, people are going to be more likely to tune in to watch. Um, I don't know. I think it was a mistake. I don't know what you guys think. You can let me down. Let me know. In chat, you can let me know down in the description below. The comments below, whatever, whatever I'm trying to say. But yeah, I do think Val fucked up. Um, also give Baddings and Bear a follow, a subscribe, a like. But it was really well made. It was really cool. And I think the insight was quite good. Um, Reuters TR would have lost everything with one move. Okay, that's a very different thing to get into. But yeah, cool video. Enjoyed that. And yeah.